Oh, wow. So much going on right off the bat. My goodness. Uh, I hope you're able to tell that I got a new camera. I started doing these reaction videos and of course, like the second video I recorded like uh, two months ago or so, my main camera, which I had used to shoot two short films and like not a lot of other stuff, it broke because of course. So I had to use my phone for a bit until I was able to get this one. I'd already started saving up for this one, but still like it sucks when your device breaks before you're actually ready to buy a new one. But here we are. I'm really happy that I got something new. I think it looks really good. I hope you do too. I'm really excited. It's, um, and I, I actually hope that I'll be able to shoot more short films on this, which is also actually my goal. So, uh, ooh, I started rambling right off the bat. Anyway, my name is Manon. If you're new here, I'm a filmmaker and, um, <laughs> obviously I make movies and also do some reaction videos here on the channel. I love covering metal videos specifically. I think they're some of the most creative videos out there and I'm always so inspired by how these filmmakers are able to do something on such a low budget and, and you know, with the restrictions that they have. I always take a lot of pleasure from watching these videos and kind of deconstructing them and I don't really pay attention to the music necessarily, but I do really look at the video and how it works in concert with the music. So, uh, and also why sometimes, you know, they can really amplify the success of a band too. It's like people sometimes just go absolutely crazy for these videos. And I've seen that with uh, Sabaton for sure. It's like all the fans came out to watch the video that I did on one of their videos. And uh, that was so much fun. And I've, I've just been having such wonderful interaction with all of you viewers and getting recommendations. And I'm going to take a look at a video that was also a recommendation today, which is Nightwish's noise. Now, I am certainly familiar with Nightwish. I have known about them for a long time. I've, you know, listened to a bit of their music. Like, it's not completely my genre. However, I do really respect them, uh, especially, I guess, since that Flora signed up, who is Dutch as am I, uh, and she was already famous long before she joined Night, uh, Nightwish. So I knew her from her After Forever days, and uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's just uh, always been on my radar and she's gained quite a bit of fame actually in the Netherlands quite recently too for singing on, on all of these uh, Dutch TV shows. So random people, like when I mention now that I'm, I'm into metal, they're like, oh yeah, I love Floriansa, uh, which is so funny. And I, I love that she's being able to reach an audience that she otherwise maybe wouldn't. And also like, these people all of a sudden are really taking a liking to pretty heavy music because of her and her popularity uh, through this TV show. So I'm always happy to see more people, you know, join the, the metal music fold. Um, it's a good place, I think. Anyway, let me not ramble on too long because uh, you know how I can get <laughs> if you have been here for a couple more videos. Right. Um, realizing now I already have my headphones on. That's good. So let's, uh, let's just go. Oh wow, so much going on right off the bat. My goodness. Uh, let me quickly go back to the start here. I love the opening. It's so grim. Like that's so creepy. What a creepy character with this really tall hat and the, and the eyes. Woo. And then it has a baby and it puts it on the table there. Um, I do what I, what is really interesting here is how washed out the blacks are. Like they, um, the, the, the blacks aren't very black, like they're very relatively light. The contrast isn't that high. 
very interesting choice. Kind of looks a little washed out. Um, and those are stylistic choices. Like those are, uh, that's not a criticism at all. I just find it really interesting that they chose to do it at, that way. And then this beautiful shot here, like it looks like a, they're in a forest. But then in the next shot, like here, we're not in the forest at all anymore. It's almost like we're being introduced to a circus almost, like the way that they're dressed. It's very interesting. I love how kind of cheerful the music is compared to how dark the <laughs> the opening was. And like this whole, it seems a little like incongruous with the opening. So I'm kind of curious to see where it's going to go next. Um, and then we have this shot here. Fabulous. I love the richness, like the texture here and the golds and the really saturated reds and blues really looking very, very lovely. And I love uh, the costumes here. They look very thought through. And it almost looks like the guy's crown here looks like a, a telephone tower or something. You know what I mean? Like a electricity poles, <laughs> like the big ones. That's cool. And I love the sort of the wall is sort of like water like behind them it's like a portrait but it's moving or i mean a painting it's really cool looking a lot of camera movement we're moving around a lot they're looking at phones here which is as you can see it's kind of lighting the girl's face from the phone um that looks really nice and i love how they have flora and the girl in the foreground as well as there in the background they're dancing and they look happy and that's what i mean it's like it looks so incongruous from this monster figure thing at the start lots of textures like i'm even noticing now here in uh, above the painting or whatever it is there's like a beehive type texture going on like a honey what's it called you know what i mean and then there's a mirror behind them here with the behind them with the kid which is almost giving me like a little bit of a snow white vibe very, of course, uh, and I've mentioned this before in a video uh, on the Ice Peak video, actually, when a woman is dressed in white, it usually symbolizes, you know, purity. And it's, it's kind of interesting how the little girl here, obviously, like her white dress is symbolizing her youthfulness and all of that. And I love that in contrast to Flora and how she's dressed in all blacks um our amazon right so let's uh, let's continue watching Okay, okay, okay. I see what they're doing now with the phones. Obviously, everyone's look everyone's just looking at their phones. I love by the way that they're just blank phones. As you can see here, that looks really cool. It's like it is so meaningless what we're looking at on our phones is that it's just blank. Um very nice. And here too, like the blacks aren't very black. They're a little washed out. It looks uh even a little green toned. Love the I don't know what this pattern is called, but you know, the honeycomb, honeycomb, that's it. Like the honeycomb uh, pattern here. And these costumes, again, everything looks really nicely textured. I love that. Uh, so yeah, that's really cool. Let's, uh, I also wanted to quickly point out here is it's giving me a little bit of an Alice in Wonderland vibe. And you know, this set here, like with the trees in the background, and then we have all this floating furniture, which again, looks really nicely textured with like browns and golds and like everything is so cohesive in uh, the color uh, scheme. It looks beautiful. And I love that it almost looks like they're on a theater stage which, you know, it's entirely possible that that's uh, the location that they had to shoot this. Beautiful. Love the camera motion.
So we have a lot of things going on here. Like uh, I, I see there's like a guy in green who seems like he, everyone is photographing themselves like this woman here and everyone seems really self-absorbed and even all of those guys that were looking at the blank phones, they were actually sitting in front of the Mona Lisa, which like considered to be one of the most beautiful paintings in the world or most, you know, which has one of the most important paintings in the world. Or if you <laughs> want to get into the history of it, like one of the first viral paintings of the world. I don't know if they're aware of that. It's where its fame comes from, but it's interesting because basically they're saying it's like everyone's just looking at their phones, not paying attention to what's happening right in front of them or what's like the beauty that's right in front of them. And the pills obviously sort of indicating to us like, oh, this is our, this is like addiction. Very nice. I love, I really love how they were able to shoot it, like the camera's spinning, but then we have multiple instances of the same people in the same shot. And that's really well done. And that's kind of hard to coordinate to do that right. So that's um, really well done. I uh, actually think they're just lights. They're not even phones. I think that they're phone shaped lights that they have everyone sort of play with as if it's their phones because the light is so bright. Like our phones on its brightest setting, they're quite bright, but they're not this bright. You can see how well Flora's face here is uh, lit <laughs> and all of the other ones too. I mean, that's one of the reasons they're blank. I mean, that works really well, obviously, but it feels like this is you know, Instagram kind of come to life, especially the guy who was like presenting this little bottle of fat away. And, uh, and, and obviously I, I think the baby, like the way that it was like put on this mask and then immediately it started seeing stuff. It's like how I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they're telling us about, you know, we start watching like babies nowadays, at least like I still grew up without a screen in front of my face other than I guess TV, we had TVs. I wasn't, I didn't have a phone when I was growing up. And now you see babies, little babies that are really able to operate a phone before they're even able to speak. So I can imagine that that is uh, kind of what they're insinuating here. And I love that. Wow. Well, that is how, uh, that is a very wonderful portrayal of how social media can be used against you, right? Incredible. It can be used against you, but also in how it can be used to corrupt people. I love this, um, in the bathtub was very cool. I loved the little sequence with 
Flora and the little girl and how in the end she's a prisoner in her dress. Very symbolic. And then here we have this sequence where it leads up to the face and then the light, the light, it's not a phone, I think, uh, it turns red and people start attacking them. And you could already kind of tell that the camera was going to go to this one person because it was the only person whose face wasn't completely covered. I wonder if that's like significant or if that was just like, oh, this is the person that's going to be the one who's going to be performing this part of the video, but also like, are the others just masked people or are they the only ones showing their true face? You could also kind of interpret it that way too. But let's watch, let's watch it again. So here we see sort of like a dystopian, post-apocalyptic, if you will, image of the American capital in the background. So obviously this is also referring to QAnon and the uprising in the United States in uh, 2021. Yeah, 2021. And how social media contributed to that. And I think that's really powerful. Incredible. So in that shot, we see both a man and a woman who are unhappy, right? One is still like is trying to make herself look pretty in this shot here. Like she is working so hard on being beautiful and it's, it's just not working. At least that's what I'm getting from this. And then in the next shot, we have this guy who's just surrounded by stuff. Like he's bought everything, like every little pill box and whatever it is that he there. Oh, that's the fat away. And he's still fat, he is still unhappy, like he's doing everything that Instagram or whatever the social media are telling him, and he's still not happy. And um, just kicking around the stuff. Very cool. <laughs> In terms of camera movement, what's also really interesting is that we keep pulling back and back and back. It's like zooming out, moving back, moving back. And then every time it transitions into a, a set or a scene like that we've already been to. So we're now like pulling back out. And I'm wondering like where, what, what we're going to settle on in the final sequence and whether they're going to make like a final point in this. Um, I love how she had this giant cone to shout at the little child. And also I felt like the way that she was made up and like how she was dressed, it reminded me a lot of actually child pageants. And I'm sure that's not like a coincidence. I'm sure that that's actually what they were going for. And then also her being actually imprisoned by her mom's dress or mom, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that Flora is supposed to be the mom, right? It's like, there's a, so many people that are using their children on social media now to, as a way to make money. And I'm sure that that's what it was about. So critical. And if you know me at all, I love that because I think that film or music videos in this case have such a great 
power in, in being able to artistically kind of, you know, make people think that way. Filmmakers, in fact, I believe personally also really have a sort of responsibility to know like what their, the semiotics, which is, you know, the, the language of visuals, if you will, you know, the, the language that they're speaking, what they are telling people implicitly without words, but with the visuals. And they are doing that very, very smartly here. Wow. Beautiful final shot. That was uh, pretty stunning. Um, so yeah, as I said, I did think that they were going to make a final point because the part of the baby and the baby growing older it seemed like there needed to be a conclusion to that as well. So basically what they're saying is we are living our lives through our devices now, like masked, if you will, with these things that, you know, the these characters on the altars or pedestals or tables, whatever you want to call them, were wearing and they never took them off and they never saw what was right in front of them, which was this beautiful nature. That is so touching and so beautifully done. And so let's take a look at some of the credits here. Of course, we have uh, the band and everyone involved with Nightwish. And uh, Stoba Hardu, I think, I, I have no idea. I find Scandinavian language is really hard to pronounce, so I hope I got that a little bit right. There's quite a few women listed here, which I always love seeing if, you're, uh, if you don't know. Uh, if you're new to the channel. Oh, okay, so it was shot in um, Finland, which is uh, really cool to see. I always like knowing where things are shot. I don't know if the outdoor scenes were shot there as well. That looked a little bit like it was maybe some VFX to me. But if, if you know, let me know. I don't know if there's actually some behind the scenes uh, video of this because it would be really great to see like how they were able to do some of this stuff. One gripe I have about uh, about behind the scenes videos is that they never really show anything about the the ideation of videos, like how did they come up with this stuff? And also rarely do you see the post-production end of things. It's like the editing and like the color grading. And I would love to see like how some of those creatives, um, you know, other than on set, which is really great, but also the part on set is just such a small part of making the video. It all just only comes together in post, right? So I uh, always love seeing that too. This looked absolutely lovely and I'm just so excited to see uh, this video and how critical it is. I think that's really cool. And, and musicians have such, especially in metal, if you look where it comes from originally, you know, there is such a powerful way that people can make a statement. And I feel like this was really, really a statement. So let me know what, you, what your interpretation of the video was, what, what each of the character meant or what they symbolized. Yeah, let me know. Like, I, I love hearing your theories too. Like, mine is just one interpretation, but especially if the filmmakers and, and the band haven't really said anything about, you know, their intentions for the story behind it, then it's so fun to kind of think about what, you know, they may be intending for us to take away from this. So let me know if you have any other recommendations. Like, I love this. I love watching videos that are a little strange or a bit horror-like. Let me know. And I, I'm so happy to do uh, more of these reaction videos because I really enjoy it. And I hope you did too. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. 
and I hope to see you on the next one. Peace.